Thank you, Wayne. Ooh, that was so beautiful. I love how you transitioned that all in. Ooh, I know we all love that. Good morning. Uh, ooh, the sun, it is shining. I feel it through the windows. Good. We need a little sunlight around here. Um, this morning, our God moment's going to be given by Graham. Come on up here, Graham Nye House. You all are going to be blessed. Let us pray. Oh, Father. What? Gosh, okay. I guess that was funny. Okay, Lord. Oh, thank you for Graham, and thank you for this beautiful message she has to share with us today, Lord. And I just pray that you give each of us a boldness um, to speak your name out loud and um, that we leave here today so full of your spirit and that we're able to just go out into the world and um, shine your light on all of those around us. And just want to say a little prayer of thanksgiving for Graham's brand new baby, grandbaby that she had. Little Wynn, thank you for his health and safe delivery. That was just two days ago. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Most importantly, oh, wow, that's loud. Uh, most importantly, where is the camera? You know, I teach Zoom, so I want to wave to my people. Oh, hey, guys! <laughs> you know, you have to say hello, right? Don't you love it when you see your friend and they run up and they just hug you? I love you. You know, that's what Jesus does every day to us. So let's start with a prayer because that's what we're going to do right back. Lord God, thank you, thank you for sending your son Jesus to uh, be with us this morning and to be with us wherever we are. We are never alone when we, have him, when we have him and we thank you, thank you, thank you. Help us to be followers and to listen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so... Um, this morning, I'm telling a story uh, about going to the synagogue, actually. So it was cold, it was December, it was Hanukkah time. And I have a Jewish friend, and she said uh, they were celebrating Hanukkah, and so I said, oh, I don't know anything about Hanukkah. I want to know about Hanukkah. And so the next day, I get this little text, and it says, how about coming to Hanukkah services with me? Ooh, that was a little scary. But, you know, I love text. You don't have to answer right away, right? You can pretend you're busy. <laughs> so, I'm like, uh, you know, let me check. Let me see. Of course, Ed said, now I'm going hunting. That's good. You go. Okay, I'm in. And she said, well, you know, you said you wanted to know more about it. Okay, I do. I do. I'm in. I'm going to Hanukkah. So I was really fired up about it, and I'm going to go to the temple on Saturday night. And so I tell my daughter, and I'm bragging, guess what? I get to go to Hanukkah on Saturday night. I'm going to the temple. And she said, what are you going to wear? <laughs> and I went, oh, oh, oh. I don't know. You know, I'm such a fashion person, fashion forward. <laughs> and um, I said, well, gosh, you know, um, I really haven't thought about that. And she said, don't wear red. Don't wear red. Why not? As to Christmas mom, blue. Hanukkah is blue. Little silver, little gold, blue. Okay, I wear blue. I'm good. And so Saturday rolls around, and it is, you know, I'm going to be picked up at 6.30, and it's now, you know, quarter of six. And so I'm thinking, oh, i got to find something blue. And, you know, I'm not, I don't think ahead. And by the way, this, this talk is not too prepared. <laughs> So, you know, just, just go with me. Um, so, uh, so, you know, it's, it's quarter six, and I'm, you know, I'm a, the horn's going to be honking pretty soon. I've got to get my act together. And I'm thinking, now, she said blue. I'm going blue. Okay, now, is this like St. Martin's Sunday night church dress down blue? I'm like, blue jeans? Am I going to be good at that? Or is this more like Sunday school blue? Or is this like high holy wear blue? I don't know. What am I supposed to be doing here? Well, it was a little late to be calling, saying, what kind of blue should I be wearing? 
so I decided I had a blue dress. It was kind of middle, you know, the, you know, you just go for the middle, right? So I went for the middle. And I put on my blue dress, and I'm all good to go, except that when I leaned over, and I put on the jewelry too, and when I leaned over, my cross fell out. And I thought, oh, this is not good. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it is good, but should I not wear the cross? Should I wear the cross? What am I doing? If I don't wear the cross, am I denying Jesus? What, what am I supposed to be doing here? And suddenly, you know, going to Hanukkah got a little more scary. Got a little, it got a little more um, angst-provoking. It's kind of like standing up here, a little angst-provoking, you know. And so I was, well, you know, you know God tell me what to do. And I did kind of say a little prayer. What am I supposed to be doing here? And I really kind of heard in my heart, just love candy. This is who had invited me to, to Hanukkah. Just be nice. Try to be nice, Graham. You know, just be nice. Go with it. Love candy. She's a wonderful person. Just love her. Okay. So the horn honks, and we do get into the car, and we take off. And she, um, she made me feel more at ease because, of course, she talked about the funeral she had been to that day. And it was at the Episcopal Church, and she said, you know, this Episcopal Church had flooded, and they hadn't quite fixed the pew, so every time I had to stand up or sit down and I pulled on the pew, the pew fell over on me. <laughs> and I thought, well, isn't that right? The Episcopalians are not well-grounded sometimes. We're just not, we're just not with it. But anyway, so we get to the, we get to the synagogue, uh, excuse me, the temple. It's not a synagogue, it's a temple. Did y'all know the difference in a synagogue and a temple? The synagogue moves. The temple is there so we went to the temple and we get to the temple and um go in and oh it was just beautiful it really actually was not a um, a hanukkah service it was actually a concert in celebration and honor of hanukkah now do y'all know what hanukkah is all about anybody you know it is about it celebrates the miracle of God's sufficiency. So way back, what, about 100, 200 years before Christ, um, the Greeks and the Syrians had taken over the second temple, and they had installed God, uh, excuse me, they installed Zeus as the, the God you were to worship in that temple, but there was a revolt, and the Jews overcame the Greeks, and they reclaimed their temple. But when that happened, there was only one bottle of oil left that had not been defiled. Because they had defiled this temple. I mean, they had made it awful. There was one bottle of oil left, enough for one night. It takes eight days to press new oil. But guess how long that oil lasted? Eight days. So they call Hanukkah the Festival of Lights in honor of the miracle of abundance, of sufficiency. So that's what we were there to celebrate. And they gave this beautiful concert. Oh, it was, it was wonderful, actually. So um, because it was the Festival of Lights, we walked into a, a darkened room that was lit with 1,500 candles and four women, all beautiful, skinny, young, dressed in black with their violins, came out and did this wonderful concert of only Jewish composers. So we started with Mendelssohn, and we went into Marvin Hamlisch, of all people, and then we went into Rodgers and Hammerstein. And, oh, it was, it was wonderful. And so I really enjoyed it, and the concert is over, and sure enough, I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, yeah, I don't know anybody here. This is amazing. I'm from Houston. You know, I know a lot of people. I think sometimes I do. But I really didn't recognize these faces, except out of the corner of my eye, there came a woman in red. (laughs) Red? (laughs) And I looked at her, and I recognized her. (gasps) Fran, it's me, Graham. You know, I'm behind the mask. She's behind the mask. It's me. And we looked at each other. Her eyes lit up. She lied, I lied. We both said we looked great in our pandemic weight. We were, we were on it. I was so glad to see her. What are you doing here? Well, I came with a friend. Who are you here with? I'm here with Candy. So, of course, I introduced Candy and Fran, and Candy did the, the socially appropriate thing. Well, how do you know Graham? And so, of course, Fran told the story. Oh, gosh. My goodness. 
the most embarrassing, most funny moment of my life really happened at Graham's house on Christmas. Oh, I need to hear this. So Fran relayed the story. I had met Fran four days before Christmas right here in St. Martin's in Sunday school. And as I met her, my husband asked, well, what are you doing for Christmas, Fran? And Fran said, well, you know, my family's Jewish. They don't celebrate Christmas. Sometimes I go with my cousin to his house because he's Christian. He's going to Mexico this year. I don't have anything to do for Christmas. So Ed said, please come have Christmas with us. And she did. So Fran came to Christmas, and it was wonderful. And to hear Fran t tell it, it was beautiful, and it was lovely, and all that kind of stuff. It was really chaotic. <laughs> and, it was, and it was Christmas, you know? It's, you know? It just was what it was. But at the end of the, the lunch, I did bring out a big platter of cupcakes, all with candles. And I explained to everyone there, including the children, okay, first we will light the candles, Everyone will take a cupcake, we will light the candles, and then we will sing the birthday song. And at that, when Fran heard that, she, she turned to Ed and she said, oh, I didn't know it was a birthday. I should have brought a present. <laughs> Whose birthday is it anyway? And Ed said, it's Jesus's. Fran put her napkin over her head as we sang the birthday song. So Candy, of course, heard that, and she, man, she's, she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're Jewish, but you're, what, you're Christian? Oh, well, what? Oh, your father, Fran, must have been Christian. Mm-mm. Well, your father wasn't Jewish. No, 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 my father was Jewish. His name was Rubenstein. <laughs> oh, then your mother must not have been Jewish. No, my mother's Jewish. Oh, then you must have married a Christian man. None of the men I married were Christian. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why? Why? Why did you convert? Well, what Fran said was, I'm what's known as a completed Jew. Jesus makes me whole. I stood there in the temple, surrounded by Jewish people. Jesus was there. Fran was there. Candy was there. The little Gentile had shown up. Gentile basically means the other. The other had shown up. But what was so special about that, that moment in time was... Even though I was the other, I was beloved, and I knew it. I was seeing Jesus in front of me, and he was loving me, just as he loves everyone, everyone. When I, get, when I talked the other day to my leaders, to the leaders that I'm within this group, I said, I don't know how to, how to end this story. And I don't. Do I, do I talk about the irony that I wasn't the woman in the red dress? <laughs> I wasn't the one who was bringing Jesus into the party. Do I talk about the idea that, I mean, who could have made this story up? Don't wear red? <laughs> okay. And then here comes red. There are so many ways I could go. Could I, could I think about the idea that Jesus came and said... I have come to bring you life more abundant. And there I was in the temple celebrating a festival of life about abundance. You know, Hanukkah turned into Christmas right there in front of me. Right there in front of me. I think what I want to, I think what I want to close with this is this. Fran did not convert. You know, uh, Candy asked the question, why did you convert? But I want to tell you something. Fran didn't convert. Fran complimented her faith. Jesus doesn't ask us 
to give up who we are, to let go of our identities, to put aside. He didn't say, Graham, get rid of your Grahamness and then you can come be with me. <laughs> he says, I'm going to meet you where you are. And all I want you to do is to love me. And you know, I think it was the vulnerability that I had. I went to the temple and it allowed me to see Jesus. Fran had to be vulnerable to admit that she needed someone, a God who could literally make her whole. Our musician played How Great Thou Art, and before he came in, I talked to him for a minute. And I said, oh, goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this. I just sang How Great Thou Art at my father's graveside. How great thou art. You know, we can't see God unless we're willing to let go. So as my father lie in his bed at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I was called, and they said, hey, come on over here, he's having trouble breathing. I looked at him, and we were talking, and I said, Dad, you're so brave. And he said, well, Graham, at this point, I don't have much choice. <laughs> But you know, we do. We do. My dad couldn't see God until he let go of this human existence, this earthly existence. We can see God when we say yes. So, ladies, I'm done. 